Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Fabi, and welcome to Arrows DIY. On my channel, I like to do Dollar Tree DIYs, high end dupes, thrift flips, and the occasional trash to treasure. Today, I'm participating in Love at First Bite collab, where two of my cr incredibly talented, crafty best friends here on YouTube got together to offer you some fun DIY inspiration. So we are all picking different sweet treats for your Valentine's Day home decor. If you like unique home decor on a budget, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I hope you enjoyed this video because I had so much fun creating. My sweet treat is should not be a surprise. It's gingerbread. I love gingerbread for the winter season. And uh, I'll link the other gingerbread videos right here if you love gingerbread as much as I. For DIY number one, I got this container from the Dollar Tree and I love the shape of the lid. So I took some Mod Podge and I'm just going to put a thin coat all around the rim as well as the bottom of that scalloped edge so that we can paint on top of this. The Mod Podge helps the paint stick to plastic and glass surfaces a little better than without it. So I'm gonna take some of this Cottage White Color by Folk Art and I'm just gonna draw a little line around, kind of giving it that enamel feel. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I want all of these DIYs to look very handmade. I think handmade gives it that charm that you can't get from store-bought home decor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a nice kind of outline around that scalloped edge as well as the entire rim of this lid. Now I didn't paint the entire surface of this because I do want to be able to put some food on top. And uh, once that was nice and dry, I do seal it at the end with the same dishwasher safe Mod Podge. Now it's not food safe, but that's why I didn't apply any Mod Podge to the top. And I am gonna use a doily. So just keep that in mind. Now I'm gonna take this wooden round that I got at Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna hit it up with some antiquing wax using a wipey, a baby wipe that's moist. I'm gonna go ahead and fold the baby wipe in fourths and just put a good amount of antiquing wax on it. So I just try to spread the antique wax as far as it'll go and just rubbing in a circular motion, we're just gonna wax on and wax off. Once the entire thing is nice and coated, I am so impressed at how much better this little wood round looks. So you do have to pinch the baby wipe into those little grooves to make sure that you do get all the antiquing wax and all the nooks and crannies. And um, yeah, so once I rubbed it for what seems like an eternity, this is what it came out like and I love it so much. Now, I'm gonna do something fun today for this riser. That's what I'm making, by the way, just like a little cake or cookie sweet treats riser. And to make that, to connect the two, I'm gonna use this margarita glass. Now, I love using this because of the shape. It has a very interesting shape. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm only gonna paint half of it. Now, if you wanted a farmhouse look, you could so paint the entire margarita glass and I will do that in the future. But given that this is a sweet treats collab, it's more fun, I'm gonna do something a little different today. So I'm gonna take the Mod Podge and I'm gonna paint this section here. We're not gonna paint that flat portion of the margarita glass at the top. We're gonna leave that bare so that it'll connect perfectly with uh, the plastic surface. I also don't paint the bottom part here because I wanted to make kind of like a snow globe riser. I don't know. I, I can't explain what goes on in my head. I just really wanted to make this. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this idea. So once we put the Mod Podge on there and the Mod Podge dried, I'm going to go ahead with the same cottage white. Now what I like about this cottage white color, it's not too stark, so it does kind of have that farmhouse feel because it's not stark bright white. It's kind of like a toned down, 
calming white, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the entire stand portion, as well as that bottom, I guess, foot of the margarita glass. And I, get, I give it two coats. So now I'm gonna take some of these wooden heart ornaments from the Dollar Tree at Crafter Square, and I paint it in red. The red that I chose is my favorite red from Folk Art, and it's called Lipstick Red. And I just painted the entire heart, gave it two coats. Now, I wanted it to fit under the margarita glass, but you'll see in a second, I'm gonna have to cut it down more than I did using my miter shears. I am using some hot Gorilla hot glue to adhere it to that wood round, and this will serve as the base of our riser. Now I'm gonna take some of these gingerbread I have left over from my other gingerbread DIYs. I have like about, I have another video where I have about 12 just different gingerbread fun inspiration for your tear tray. So I just had some left over from that and I'm just gonna put two of them in there so that to create kind of like a romantic scene inside of this snow globe riser thing I'm making. So it didn't fit when I put the margarita glass um, on, on top, so I did have to trim it down some more. And I thought it was super cute. I didn't have any tiny wooden hearts, but that would be a, an amazing alternative. If you have that, go ahead and use that. I couldn't find them at my Dollar Tree or in my stash, so I just had to cut down this. And my husband said it kind of looks like a love seat like the gingerbread are sitting on a love seat, but that's fine because love is the theme today for this Valentine's decor. Now I do glue them with this Gorilla Hot Glue. Keep in mind, we did put antiquing wax on this base, so they are not gonna stick permanently. If you want a permanent hold, you should use some E6000. However, I want to use this throughout the seasons, so I do want to remove the love seat and the gingerbread out of that little snow globe portion. So I'm happy that they easily come off. If I pull on them, they'll come right off. They'll pop right off since I used Gorilla Glue. What I'm saying is if you put antiquing wax on wood, hot glue does not stick to it permanently. So that was my idea. Now to attach the top of the riser, I put some E6000 as well as some hot glue in different spots. And that's how the risers assembled. And I love it. I think it's so fun. Now I'm gonna take some of this red and white baker's twine, and I'm just gonna add a little detail to the bottom there of the stand. And I'm just gonna wrap it around the stand, that middle portion there, and just tie it with a simple shoelace bow. I do secure it with hot glue as well so that everything stays. But I think this kind of gave the perfect touch for handmade, the handmade theme here. So you gotta let me know in the comments below what you think about this DIY, because I think it's so cute. So here it is staged in my home. And I just displayed it with some real sweet treats that are no longer existent because my children got to them. If you like this DIY as much as I do, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Now for this next DIY, I'm gonna be using four of these crates from the Dollar Tree, and they're the ones with the little gaps inside. Some people use these for book stacks, um, but I got these in the Crafter Square section. So I took four of them, and I just took the labels off the back and now I'm going to construct them in this position. So I'm not gonna describe it, I'm just gonna let you see what I'm doing because I think it's easier that way. I use a pencil to mark it off once I positioned it. And then I'm only gonna add the hot glue in the sections where these two pieces meet. Now you could totally use wood glue or E6000 I just use this, um, but it's very important to attach all of your wood pieces before you add any antiquing wax or paint. All right, so this is what it's looking like once we attach the first part. 
Now I'm trying to make kind of like a hot cocoa bar, tea bar, coffee bar. This is gonna be next to my coffee maker in my kitchen. So my children love making hot cocoa in the winter season. So for these winter months, they that's they love it. So I made this little DIY for them and they love it. They're so excited about it. And um, yeah, so I hope you like this one as well. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and just place this third wooden crate right underneath the first two we made after I marked it off with a pencil as well. So if you wanna recreate this DIY, I would recommend just watching this video and pausing it between every step so that you see exactly where you need to place these wood crates. So I'm gonna make one side more dedicated to tea and another side dedicated to hot cocoa. And I also wanna add some jars of marshmallows as well as some peppermint spoons later in the year. But next year, I will be making way more of these. So make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So once we have that third cube attached, so once we have that third cube attached, we're gonna rotate this structure and we're gonna add the last, the fourth one. So now I'm gonna place it like so and I'm gonna mark it off with a pencil in any spots that it meets with other wood crates. That way I know exactly where to put the hot glue without it seeping into any unwanted parts. I wanted all of these to have a farmhouse feel because I do want my kitchen to have a farmhouse feel. Even though I do have a lot of fun decor in my kitchen, I do like farmhouse for the kitchen. Let me know in the comments below, do you like farmhouse for your kitchen? What, what decor style do you like for your kitchen? And do you switch it up with the seasons? I'm curious to know. All right, so once the fourth wood crate is attached, this is what the structure is looking like. It does have a gap at the bottom there, but I have something I wanna put down there. So I'll show you at the end how I staged it. So now I took this little bird house. I got this one at Michael's. Everything else I've used in all my DIYs is from the Dollar Tree, but this particular bird house I got at Michael's. And I'm not sure if I would recommend it, even though it's super cute, it gave me a lot of trouble and you'll see in a minute. So now I took my same favorite color, lipstick red, and I painted the roof of this birdhouse. Once it's fully painted, I also wanted to, oh right, I also wanted to accentuate that scalloped edge. So if you notice, all of my DIYs today have a scalloped edge. So that will be the, the tying detail that will run through all of my DIYs and it kind of makes them more cohesive, that scalloped edge. Okay, and I accentuate all the scalloped edges with this red paint. All right, so I also go ahead and I paint that little perch as well in that red color. I do not paint the bottom in this red color. So I want this entire structure to have antiquing wax on it. So I also use a little bit of a baby wipe and I put it on a pencil to pick, to fix any imperfections, any mistakes I might have made. So now I'm gonna take the antiquing wax and when I put it on the face of this birdhouse, I noticed that it was not adhering. So if you're a woodworker or an experienced crafter, can you please tell me why this was happening? I, just me guessing, I think it might have had some ad adhesive that dried in the front because this only happened in the front section of this one particular birdhouse. So I'm curious if it was like adhesive or maybe you guys know what happened, but basically my antiquing wax would not stick to certain uh, portions of the wood. So it just looked splotched and it was driving me nuts. So what I did was I took a little bit of sandpaper from the Dollar Tree and I just cut off a little portion, folded it over on itself, and I just sanded it. Um, you wanna be careful when you sand it because it's a fragile birdhouse. Um, but I did use multiple different pieces of abrasive sandpaper. 
to just sand all around the face of this birdhouse and it did work uh it improved a little bit but i still i just really want to know what went wrong now this other birdhouse is from the dollar tree and it did not give me a headache at all it took the antiquing wax perfectly and you will see i love how this one turned out so I mean, use whatever birdhouse you want to use for your project. And I hope you like this um, rustic DIY. All of the DIYs today are kind of rustic, kind of, well, definitely playful. <laughs> All right, so I've noticed that when I was wiping off the antiquing wax, it was pulling off a little too much. So I did have to go back and kind of dab I had to apply more antiquing wax and kind of dab it off as opposed to wiping for the face of this birdhouse. But you could just use a completely different birdhouse. I like that little heart detail in the front, so I think it was worth all the trouble. Uh, let me know what you think about this little birdhouse. So once I antique waxed both birdhouses, I did use a baby wipe and wipe off any excess antiquing wax and this is how it turned out let me know what you think i think it's adorable i i love antiquing wax all right so now i'm going to take these and before i wax the entire structure of this gingerbread mansion hot beverage bar i'm going to hot glue this in this position so the first little birdhouse is going to go on this one and the other little birdhouse is going to go a little bit higher on the crate on top. And if you notice, I did not antique wax the bottom of the birdhouses because I want them to have a really strong hold, strong bond. Now I take some of my favorite stickers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint these. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to stick them on to this crate. Now these are gonna be the words on my crate. And once these letters are in the position that I want them, I use my embossing tool to kind of press them on a little firmer so that none of that antiquing wax seeps under the letters. I also use some of these farmhouse stickers from the Dollar Tree as well. And I just stuck them on randomly some inside of the crates some outside of the crates just randomly wherever you know you want to do it so it took me a lot to figure out what I wanted to write there coffee was obviously not gonna fit so I just ended up putting the words warm up because that's the that's the goal here it's so chilly where I live and I wanted this to be inviting you know invite the kids to warm up with a nice beverage and a cozy blanket and I really like how this one turned out and they're so excited about it which makes it worth all of this effort all right so it took me an eternity to do this I totally sped it up for you guys but I just wrote the words warm up using these letters and I also pressed them down really really well because you don't want to seep through so here, when you start with the antiquing wax, you're gonna kind of dab it on top of the letters. Make sure you don't have too much antiquing wax on your sponge applicator. And once that's there, you, once that's on that area, you can just go ahead and antique wax the entire structure. And it's very simple to do. It's no rocket science, you know, just apply the antiquing wax. And once it's applied to every nook and cranny, I um, went ahead and I wiped it off. But I appreciate your time. If you have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much, I appreciate it so much. And if you hit that thumbs up button, it really helps my channel be shown to other viewers on YouTube. Kinda tells YouTube, hey, this girl might have a good idea. And show other people my stuff and I really appreciate that guys thank you so much for being here so now once it's done I go ahead and I use my exacto knife to just kind of pull this off you could also use one of those fancy Cricut tools and um, I just pre recently got some from Dollar Tree so I am super excited I found them last week 
but I did this video way before that. So I was just using my X-Acto knife and it worked perfectly fine. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and take off any stickers, all the hearts, and um, this is what it looks like. Now for the last finishing detail, I'm gonna use hot glue to make faux snow. And I've used this in my other gingerbread DIYs videos if, um, if you're interested. All you would have to do is use your hot glue and kind of drip it, let it drip down. If you want more of a long drop, just keep applying more hot glue in that one particular spot. And I also recommend having, if your hot glue is extremely hot, like if your glue gun has been on for a long time, it will be more runny. So you'll get more of a skinny drip. If you want a thicker drip, then you would wanna do this when your hot glue is not as hot, like a minute or two after you turn on your glue gun, if that makes any sense or right after you apply a new glue stick. I hope I'm making sense. I need another coffee. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this folk art color in wicker white and I'm just going to paint over these hot glue gun, wow, these hot glue details. I'm just gonna paint over them with a thinner brush and you could go over it about two to three times if you want it to be stark white, but I wanted it to be very rustic so I only went over it once and as you can see it just accentuates all the details I kind of put some accumulated in the corners of those crates as well as the bottom of the birdhouse and on the little top of the perch that little perch there as well and on the roof of the birdhouses just to give that nice wintry feel so this is what it looks like once it's staged with my creamer my little um, dishes as well as um, hot cocoa packets and this little gingerbread dude I got this tin from Dollar Tree and I put some tea packets in there as well just to show you how we're gonna use it in our home but I really hope you like this one because the kids love it and so do I now for this last DIY this one's super simple but this is just gonna be a sign that I'm gonna put um, in my kitchen and I'm just showing you here, you could even use it for the top of a riser because it has so many beautiful details on it. For a dollar, guys, a dollar. These are my favorite plates to use um, as signs for Dollar Tree. I used this same plate last spring for my lemon plate, for my lemon kitchen decor. But yeah, I love it. So I just gave it a good coat of Mod Podge to help the paint stick. Now once, I, once that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this same heart we used in DIY number one and I'm just gonna paint it in the same lipstick red color by folk art now I'm gonna take my favorite poster stickers from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna write the word made and the good thing about these stickers they are not overly sticky so they do allow they do allow you to pull them up and adjust them as needed and they will not pull up your paint so you don't want to press them down until you have the position perfect, but if you do have to pull them up, they're very forgiving. So now I'm going to go ahead and use these same stickers and I'm going to paint the letters that I need in black using the Apple Barrel black paint and they take about two to three coats to be fully painted black. Now I'm going to take these tiny little letters and I'm going to adjust them. You could use rulers, I'm not very finicky. Um, you know with measurements and stuff I, I like I said I do want it to look a little handmade so once everything is in position and I spaced everything out I go ahead and I hot glue that heart right there now I wanted to center these letters to the heart so that's why I adhered the heart first and then I took an eternity to make sure that these were nice and straight and yeah, it's very simple to do with Dollar Tree supplies. So you don't need a Cricut to make very beautiful signs for your home. So now I'm gonna just outline this scallop detail on the edge there. I think it's so beautiful. So I'm gonna use that same lipstick red color and I love it. I think it's so sweet for Valentine's Day. And um, it's gonna stay up in my kitchen all winter until the spring. So I'm really happy about this. 
You could totally add little gingerbread dudes to the heart and stuff. I just wanted to keep it a little bit simple because my tear tray is so loud with gingerbread that, um, yeah, I just wanted to keep this one nice and simple. Less is more, right? Sometimes, sometimes I, I show restraint, guys, you see? <laughs> Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun creating these alongside my friends. And um, yeah, I hope you got an idea or two to inspire you in your home decor. And uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about these DIYs. Oh, and this is the bonus one I was just gonna show you. I got one of those gingerbread dudes from the Dollar Tree and I painted him with some antiquing wax in the same cottage white color for his Rick Racks. And for his bow tie, I used that same lipstick red color and I just hot glued some little clothespins on there. And he's gonna be my little recipe holder. So let me know what you think about him in the comments below. If you're still here, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. Special thank you to my sweet friends Mary Beth from MB Gray Designs and Maddie from Artsy Maddie. Mary Beth made some super cute conversation heart DIYs and Maddie made some super cute and adorable sweet treat DIYs. Thank you so much for being here. Take care, God bless, catch you on the next one. Bye. If you like this video, here's some other videos you might enjoy.